Well, thank you very much. I'm so glad to be here. It feels like a perfect forum for us at Revisit and for me as well. So thank you. Absolutely. Well, telling us a bit about yourself, Gabriela. Tell us about your background, your education. Uh, how did you become interested in all this? Well, it started really early. Uh, I don't know if you can tell my age, but I'm not so old. I'm only, only 25, uh, so my, my story is not, it's not so long yet. Uh, that was but... a dangerous question about the <laughs> age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We didn't yeah. About, uh, directly, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I would say if we go really long back um, since yeah. I was a child, I would say that it started like, yeah, when I was a child, standing along the road uh, besides our house uh, selling old stuff just because it was fun. Uh, wow. we, didn't, we didn't like have any vision more than it was fun standing there alone. It was me and my best friend. Um, and we were selling this stuff. I especially remember this time when um, a tourist came by uh, with his car because it, it wasn't really a good place because it was wasn't a good place for people to walk it was only like cars going back and forth and we have had this camping uh, near near our house uh, so tourists came and they just stopped by to ask for the way to the camping and we were like well you just go there and but but maybe you would like to buy a book as well and it was this old a uh, Christmas book and it was a little bit broken uh, but I think he, he bought it for like uh, 10 Swedish pounds uh, we were super happy but then my parents they just laughed because they said like Gabriela it was broken you cannot sell broken stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow but, but I think everything started like uh, much more earlier than you think uh, even though you come in contact with the concept entrepreneurship in school, for me it was in high school, uh, you, you get in contact with the practical examples much earlier and some some people experience and do things themselves that is entrepreneurial spirit without even knowing, knowing it. Um, so mm -hmm. except from, from that, uh, here in Sweden we, uh, kids can sell something called a jul team, and it's a Christmas magazine, yeah. it's all mm -hmm. fun. So they go knock on doors and they sell, sell stuff but that's also one thing that I think triggered my entrepreneurship. Awesome, awesome. So um, I'm, I'm just curious, so was entrepreneurship in your family as well? Was it something that you got from your parents or, or was no. it school that influenced you? Yeah, that's actually a good question because, uh, well, I have studied uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, at different levels. Um, Mm -hmm. And that is a common question, like uh, that entrepreneurs usually have parents that are entrepreneurs themselves. So, but uh, my parents aren't <laughs> entrepreneurs, I would say. And uh, my, my mother is a kindergarten teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that is her passion, really. And my daddy is a, a customer relationship uh, salesman, uh, you can say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really like uh salesman as me maybe he's like more like calm uh person but he builds like relationships slowly and like long-term relationships so uh he's working in the glass industry yeah. right yeah right. <laughs> so, so the the this this entrepreneurship bug bit you at school yeah yeah i would say that uh definitely um like my aunt, she she had her own uh, company once uh, or twice, but th that was when I was older as well. Uh, so yeah, I would say it was in in school. Uh, you know, there were some sometimes you just sold cookies for doing some trips, but that was also something that triggered me. But but it was for the first time I would say in high school uh, we had the course. Um, you, you just stop me. I ju I just uh, continue talking, but just stop please me. go on. <laughs> so interesting uh, yeah i really i really like like thinking back on these times uh, because you have for me i have always um uh, thinking forward and about the entrepreneurship now but it's really nice to think th think um, about it from history as well yeah uh, uh, but it all started in in high school we had this uh, entrepreneurship course i mm -hmm. actually started uh, 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 
it's called like society um, uh, yeah it's about the society I, I don't know re yeah. real English translation but you you mm -hmm. who are you speaking uh, it was uh, the some some head like some heads program it um yeah <laughs> mm, and, perfect. Um, yeah so so uh, that program uh, did the first year together with the economics program and okay. um, yeah so we had this entrepreneurship course together and i decided to do my fictive company uh, because that was also my my picture of entrepreneurship i would say yeah uh, but, Okay. They all had, we could do whatever we want, whatever we wanted. Some did like uh, cooking books or uh, yeah, they yeah. different things. Mm. And I think even before that, if we if we go back to your junior high school, then we have the, the concept of prow, where you get to go outside and you get to be an entrepreneur, get to follow someone who who's, who's already in that field. So I think this whole, uh, the education system is geared towards putting in more entrepreneurial thoughts into your students. So awesome. Then did you get any formal education in business or uh, at the university level? Yes. Um, yes, I did. So after mm -hmm. uh, junior high school, uh, I, uh, well, I did this effective uh, company. Uh, and then we get, did the EF Ung Företagsamhet. So already there we started some stuff. And uh, immediately I, uh, applied for university and and there was a program called enterprising business development uh, really exciting uh, it was um, uh, more academic than i thought than i imagined but we got really nice uh, education we did um, uh, we used partner companies and did development projects on them kind of the mm -hmm. whole part. and so i love okay. being being there like in the real work uh, and then getting that theoretics and then making some development suggestions. How interesting. Uh, what were some of the learnings from the UF food building or, or, or that education? Some some interesting learning that um, do you mean like the from the university from uh, from the, the from from running your your business and the UF company that you started? uh well a lot <laughs> there sure. is, uh, yeah there's a long list uh, but one of the biggest things uh, is uh, uh, to have the courage uh, to go out and build the brand before you really have the product uh, it's mm -hmm. a bit tricky, but what we did it was to um, build up a um, customer base before we yeah. even launched product so we uh, did it easy we did a facebook page and we start, started to build the expectations and we shared well with our family and friends and we were like soon soon so we sold the bracelets and uh, and then uh, we we launched uh, the product and we just reached our goal the same night um, so that is that's one thing that i really bring um yeah product. Yeah, so it, it was perseverance, I'd say. One has to stick to the idea, even if you face some failures and if you even if you face some setbacks, the idea is to just keep going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, it's a risk. We it, it could be the other way that people just uh, uh, got uh, disappointed, like that we yeah. had built their expectations too high. Uh, but what mm -hmm. we did, we didn't build the company around product really we build it about relationships and about who we were what we stand for yeah. uh, so yeah yeah so and, the product, yeah and that makes a very natural connection when you talk about building relationships that makes a very natural connection to your work here at Drifu set so would you like to tell us a bit about what you do here what is Drifu set <laughs> well uh, as I told you before uh, my bachelors were, were very academic so all our creativity we're pretty put down into this uh, box, <laughs> I usually say. And then Drive to the uh, part here is to bring out the this uh, creativity, creativity again that the uh, university maybe put down a little. University is correct, don't, don't uh, get me wrong here. But um, yeah. yeah, but Drive to the is a association. Uh, so we are uh, founded by, by the university. Uh, Linus University and uh, our finance mm -hmm. by them and 
we expect it. Um, but we are an association in 13 places in Sweden, and one in Finland and one in Norway. And what we mainly do is that we help students develop within entrepreneurship. So it, it not, doesn't all, always have to be meaning that you have to start a business. So we are talking both about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. That is two different things. So we Thanks. use just practical exercises uh, to generate ideas, to find the software, and to investigate and define and uh, to map out your business uh, or uh, just your idea your project and uh, we help you to develop that to find the potential customer and to loop so that is one of the main things that we coach you and we mm -hmm. give you a little bit train support uh, right. meet you on your level and then we mm -hmm. uh, make you come forward so that is our main mission to make you come forward with your idea and not only have them make them come true. Yeah. yeah, so you take uh, take people at the ideation stage when, when it's just the idea. Mm. Right, so how does an idea turn into a startup? Oh, wow, that's a lot of steps. <laughs> 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 well, we um, and start somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. We can have the ideation, and we usually start with quantitative uh, results. So before, mm -hmm. Before we choose one idea, maybe we need to generate, we need to go from ourselves. What do I have? Maybe like dig where I stand, what kind of resources do I have today? That is what we call actuation. Right. When we go from uh, and use what we have, we, we open a cabinet at home. Uh, yeah. It's like what ingredients do you have at home right now? Okay, then we see what it will be. We don't know the results maybe, but we will, mm -hmm. we will work with the ingredients that we have and then see what the results will be. And that can lead to many ideas. So maybe you come to us with one idea, but then we want to work with you and we want you to work with your potential customer uh, or user uh, and work with them together so that you create the, the final product or service uh, yeah. again together. Um, yeah, that, that sounds so interesting. <laughs> yeah, but then... Um, what what do you think, Gabriela, as the, the biggest problem that has come up with in your experience when they come to you with an idea? What do you think is the biggest hurdle that they're facing at the moment? Um, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> right right now, I'm, I'm not the, it's actually my colleague who's meeting the students the most right, right. now, uh, but we have a lot of different challenges that they face. One of the biggest mm -hmm. ones is to meet the right people and that can help them forward. And it's about meeting people in different kind of industries, different kind of areas. And that's where we come in uh, because we, we usually know where they are. So we can guide them into the right direction, in, into the right person, uh, so that they don't need to lay time on just looking for the right person. They can, and especially like if you're an international student, for example, then it's even harder to know mm -hmm. and to get in contact with the right person because you're in another country that's that is having another system that you're used to so it's a different mindset as well absolutely and networking is something that is that has to come from the from from really from the beginning so uh, dream said helps in the networking part as well yes we do so we have guidance that is our main activity and that you book an individual or group and guidance together with us and we we have a situation uh, yeah situation coaching so we, we go from your mm -hmm. you and your uh, uh, challenges and uh, opportunities of course uh, but we also have different kind of activities uh, so it can be inspirational uh, speaking uh, speakers mm -hmm. and we can have a network event. We have this uh, uh, network called Young Ladies in Business. I'm sorry for all the men who are listening to this right now, but right now we only have this uh, for women because it, it's still a fact that uh, less women are starting businesses. Uh, so we also want to work for that to increase that number. Awesome.
a lot of awesome work that you guys are doing. And uh, are there any specific tools that you use for this? Any any specific methodology that you guys follow? Well, I actually have the book in front of me right now, so I can Lovely. share it with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just going to move my cup up. So here is the book, uh, Lupa, exactly. So Lupa is what I talked to you about before, is that when you always uh, Lupa with your customer or yeah. potential user and gather that feedback, we usually say that the cold feedback is for you when they give you when they not just say well it sounds like a good idea and that's like mm -hmm. oh, is it really a good idea that but, but we don't judge any idea right we 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 want your students to go out there yourself and talk to them so maybe if they talk about um real experiences or they start to tell you stories about this idea that you just told yeah. them uh, then then you know that there is something going on there is something to dig deeper into and then they maybe suggest you some ideas so just bring those things that is that's go to you but we have a lot of methodologies uh, but that is the main uh, main thing with our business development uh, methodology but, but, uh, but here here's a lot we can we can go through but we but that that takes uh, a few days <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i'm sure it's it's like a whole seminar in yeah. itself <laughs> yeah. but it, but we have like, um, uh, for example, we have those who come to us themselves. They have an idea already. Mm -hmm. We also have those who doesn't have an idea. And uh, we maybe go out to classes and have workshops. But then mm -hmm. we have ideation uh, process. So then we have this um, exercise where they invent in themselves first. What, what resources do I have? What interests do I have? What the contacts, experiences, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. And so if I do one of those, we call it the opportunity map, and you do one, and mm -hmm. maybe one third from the audience do one, and then I could, I, 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 um, I, I say one of my contacts, and you say one of your interests, and then we have one from the audience saying one of their um, uh, resources, so it can be maybe a bike or <laughs> whatever it might yeah. be, and then it's about the content. Okay, can, how many business uh, ideas can we make out of these? Mm -hmm. How can we? How can we? Yeah. So that's that's a practical tool that we use. Otherwise, we we use the the normal like this is small canvas. Uh, that's a really useful mm -hmm. uh, tool as well. We have pitch technique as well, where we follow different steps so that we make sure that you include everything that you need to sell uh, sell your idea. Yeah, and uh, speaking of pitching, that's like a whole, <laughs> whole new, uh, a whole new arena because I have yet to meet an entrepreneur or a founder who would say that yeah, I love pitching. <laughs> it's something, something that everyone needs a little bit more support on. So, what would you, uh, how would you say is, um, is, is does pitching come out as a problem for for the people who come to Dream Who Set? Do you think that you need to give in a lot of training? For pitching, yes, I, I would say um, I wouldn't say it's only uh, only pitching, but uh, we we do a lot of uh, practice uh, with students uh, within pitching. We have lectures and workshops, and we also sit mm -hmm. like this where you can practice on us just individually, like uh, not with an audience, of course, but <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but only really so uh, that you can practice. Um, as some people are more comfortable by practice on someone they know and some are yeah. more comfortable with the, doing it uh, on someone they don't know like like for us for example where they can just practice before they talk to an investor or a customer or, or what it might be yeah because usually when you have an idea in your mind and when you start explaining there's this no end to that so the idea is to have like a short crisp pitch like an elevator pitch that I'll just give it in, in, in 60 seconds or so. So what, what would you think is, uh, what advice would you give to our, our audience here about pitching? Well, uh, as you're saying, it's really important uh, because sometimes we meet students and they, they start to explain uh, their idea and yeah. maybe we have a hard time understanding it. So the most important thing 
in a pitch is that you can maybe say just one sentence that describes your idea. So it's very clear for both the, the listener and, and yourself. So I, I would suggest you, and we have, uh, have the tools for this as well, but just yeah. writing one sentence that describe uh, what problem you solve, for whom, and uh, what is the value with it. So. Yeah. Perfect. That sounds awesome. Uh, we have a couple of questions, so we're just going to pause our discussion here and go to the questions. Yeah. Um, Startup Links would like to know how is Dreamfuse different from other organizations, like, for example, Almi? And do entrepreneurs need to pay for receiving Dreamfuse support? Is there some um, yeah payment involved? Yes. Thank you very much for the question. So. Uh, we're different in the sense of our target group is students. So we usually say that why uh, the ecosystem, the innovation support system here in Kronobay, in, in Småland uh, and in Vekwa is working so good is because all of these uh, companies, uh, or, or not companies, but organizations, um, is sticking to their place and to their target groups and to their offers. So we have a really good collaboration with each other. We have networks together. And we have um, and we have meetings like each month that where we update each other on what we do, what kind of events, activities uh, that we can share with each other, etc. Um, but what 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 is different with us is that we we stick to the students and do our uh, offer. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So do uh, and. Uh, yeah, so question that you do not uh, uh, about the payment. Yeah, so no, they don't pay. Uh, since we are financed by the university and something called Tivex Packet is funny for from the states. So that is also a very good thing with Sweden uh, in general uh, that, that they support uh, entrepreneurship uh, and innovation and startups, uh, and they're really working for this and, and see that see the good thing in it. So. Yeah. So that is how we are financed, um, and that is why we can offer everything for free for, for the students. All of the activities, the gardens, our workshops and education. I think that is awesome. That is such a huge to, to the startup community and the ecosystem there. That's just brilliant. Um, then we come to the next question. Well, it's more of a comment that the business canvas model is a tricky one. <laughs> Is the book in English, this Lupa, the book that you have, is it in English or Swedish? Uh, thank you very much for your question, Farah. Uh, we have the book in both English, English and Swedish. Um, you can come to us, uh, you can of course borrow, borrow it. You can also buy it. I think it's at, at Libris or yeah, you can search for Lupa, you say it like this, and you, you can buy it yourself. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, if Adlib was selling it in English or Swedish though, but we have uh, both uh, at our office. Uh, okay. the, the business model canvas is the trick one, Fan says. Uh, I think that Fan has, uh, we have been working with you on this one. And then just to add a comment on that is, I think, to work with it continuously, to not only do it once, but um, when we have guidance with students, we maybe then come back, they come back to us with a problem or they feel like, I can't really find my customer or uh, it doesn't go really well with my with my phone or so then we you we usually recommend them like okay and ask them did you did you check your business like canvas lately and and they usually didn't so that's also our our job to remind them to support them and to help them come forward yeah. to, to look at it continuously because you change well, maybe we don't have time to go through the whole business model canvas uh, right now. But uh, the thing with the business model canvas it, is that it uh, consists of nine different blocks, and these are dependent on each other. So if you change something in one block in one part of your business, then you need to look over all of the other blocks uh, to see what is happening. If you change something in your offer. Maybe you reach another target group. Maybe you need to use another channel to reach them. Um, yeah, so on. Yeah, and of course, the value that is added to the whole thing is the idea that all of uh, all the people who do it together 
uh, add the whole value to it's not just the books but it's also the people who are working together on this uh, but Gabriel if I understand you right uh, Jifu Seth is um, it's financed by Tilbex Burkitt and it's financed by the university but is it just the university students that are your target audience or our our main uh, task uh, is to work with the university students yes okay uh, we have met uh, high school students as well and um, but mm. the main um goal with that uh, uh, is to uh, inform them that we exist so that when when they are finished with high school they can come to us or so they, they know that we exist and some of them are doing uh, um, so so we have we have met them we, we meet them and we are having inspirational uh, lectures for them uh, because we want we want them to know that there is help if you want to start a business after your uh, high school stu uh, high school studies uh, right yeah so you go if, into sorry go on yeah yeah but but if there are any because sometimes when we have met them and and so on we there are some that need some help and we we would like to help as many as possible so we don't turn them down no we don't yeah. uh, but 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 as i said like most of our time will lay on the students and then we're here for those as well right right so you go into the or the university department with your presentations and with your uh, uh, learning or coaching yes all right. Uh, are there any specific departments that you visit, or are like are you only going to the business schools, or do you go? You can have entrepreneurs in any department at all. Yes, and that's one of the best part having a Drivers at Linnaeus University, because they are they are working with entrepreneurship, and they they one of their goals is to have every student to get in contact with the concept of entrepreneurship. So there we 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 are a compliment for them uh, with the practical examples. Uh, so except from the theoretical part of uh, entrepreneurship, we come in, they really can experience it. And we're not only focusing on the economics, uh, as you can understand, it's for, for all of the students. Uh, then we have some, uh, some, uh, uh, some classes that we go to every year. We have everything from the musician program like music production program and it is a media technique program and yeah so it can it can be yeah we have coaching and sport management as well so yeah, yeah. sounds so educationist myself so i I can actually feel the energy of the students as you're speaking I can actually see you walking into the music department <laughs> and talking to students and they're going crazy with ideas and all yeah. that so, um, I mean, I'm really curious and probably you're the best person to answer this question because you have experienced this yourself and this is something that this is that how do students mix business with studies because as I understand uh, with 100% studies and then starting a new business is not uh, not something easy it's not something that everyone can pull off so what do you say is how, how do you see this happening uh, well uh, each program is different right so uh, some programs they have a lot of courses uh, parallel and some have them uh, like one at a time so it's uh, yeah. the, the speed is different um i would say <laughs> one of the things is to take help from us actually uh, to give it uh, to get the support to take help and and not only work, work like within yourself because there will be challenges and there will be problems that you're facing so instead of just uh, have, have them for from for yourself and to struggling and to be stressed and i, I would uh, suggest to to open up and talk to someone about them because usually there are help and we are we can be a huge help uh, with maybe a lot of your questions and hopefully we if we we cannot answer them we, we send it to the right person um, mm. But of course, it's about time management, and and uh, maybe it's also about study techniques. So, um, but we we yeah. usually like uh, you decide how you want to lay up your time. If you want to focus on your your studies, um, 
uh, for a period of time, uh, well, your idea doesn't go away. So, and, and sometimes we, when we meet students for, for the second or third or fourth time, and maybe they say, oh, I'm so sorry, I haven't done this, I haven't done this exercise. And, and we say, like, it's only fine. We know, we know the situation of the student life. Um, yeah. But we can only support you and, and to come forward. Maybe you did a little. Maybe you did one block of the business model canvas. Maybe you talk to one person about your idea and you loop, you, you gather some feedback. Um, so I would say like, be, be happy about the work that you do. So, so and don't always feel like I need to do so much all the time, but it's better yeah. that you did something than nothing, right? Exactly. And then again, time management and looking for the right resources and oh my god the amount of resources that are available just the library alone is so resource all sorts of things about all sorts of things about writing papers and whatever you want to start and then of course there's Drip who said right inside the university campus so i think that for students it is um the the, the perfect time of their to start something new and come up with ideas so that's yes. uh Exactly. One more thing to add is that uh, there's also a fact saying that if you start business together, you increase yeah. the chances of the company to survive. And we have great collaboration with a organization called Companion. So if, if you are a couple of students or, or more, we always bring them in and they can help you and uh, getting forward there. And if you are alone, but you want to start together with someone, we also connect them and we, yeah, we're always working to help you to meet someone who wants to work with you. Wow, that sounds awesome. And talking about collaborations, uh, uh, Gabriela, how do you think, uh, what would you, how would you suggest students to find co-founders? Because I, I see that a lot of uh, founders struggle with finding the right people to work with. Um, Oh, well, I, I would say actually the same. Like, if if we have someone come with, coming with with that kind of question, we bring in companion. So they are the right organization to answer that question if you want to start a business together. And right. we are actually right now working on how we can build a an activity together, Drivhuset and companion, for the next spring, like the next uh, uh, mm -hmm. semester, uh, so that we can bring students who are uh, together having an idea, but also those who are by themselves um, and is looking for someone to, to work with. Awesome. But uh, again, it's about the networking. So we have a lot of different events and activities. You can always see them on our website or the other organizations' uh, website on their calendars. They have a lot of different uh, uh, free events, uh, activities, courses, webinars, etc., where you can find these people. So yeah, I said yes to yeah. that. Awesome. Uh, what is Companion? The, could you tell us a little bit about Companion? Um, well, it's it's similar to Drivhus. They are also existing in, in whole Sweden. And um, uh, I would say that the main thing is that they help uh, help entrepreneurs uh, to, to start a business that wants to start together. They are actually working a bit with the, a, a different kind of company forum. So usually the, the students coming to us, maybe we work with a sole trader company where you start on your own or actually mm -hmm. um, and uh, but, but they, are, they are very expert when it comes to economic association. So right. that is, you need to be three people uh, who are starting it. But there's also that you have um, uh, statues, statues, and that can be pretty tricky. So they mm -hmm. they have that uh, that formal thing that they can help you with. Uh, but okay. they also have guidance uh, and other kind of social projects. Uh, but uh, if you have more more questions about Companion, I really recommend you to contact them or go to their website companion.se or probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we can now take a few more questions. Um, do you at Drief who said also have any startup grants or funding support? Funding no. is the next question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a usual question and a challenge for the for the entrepreneurs as well. But we we do not have it, and that is also a part of 
that we are standing uh, like, like we are standing at our place in the whole innovation ecosystem. Uh, so mm -hmm. you can you can find this at Ali. Uh, you can also we, uh, another opportunity is that if we see that there is a potential innovation height. I think that you can translate it like that. Uh, yeah. But we see that there's a, a potential innovation here. Uh, we we contact the innovation office, the grant and innovation office at LNU. So then we bring in them, we get a meeting together, and then they decide whether they take it forward or not, or you continue working with us. Then we work with pitching, for example. Uh, if they then decide that well, this is interesting, we can take it forward. Uh, so they are the, the ones who are more uh, judging the idea later on. Then they take it to another step, uh, which is called uh, the four clover. Thief clown is another um, uh, another kind of network where there are four uh, different universities. Right. But they then deciding if there will be any money. And then you can get uh, funding for doing your marketing research. So it's a, still in the early stage of your business. Right, right, right. Yeah. Awesome, thank you so much for all the, uh, all the and I'm sure it's very valuable for all our attendees here. Um, so um, how has COVID impacted your business, Gabriela? Because I, I know universities for a fact had been uh, shut down for such a long period of time and uh, all of your students uh, that come from the university. How has that impacted your work? Yes. Um, so just to be clear on that, we aren't a business. If if that is what uh, Naimul is meaning, meaning. Mm -hmm. So we are an association, yeah. we're not a company. Um, yeah. Just to be <laughs> just to be clear yeah. on that. Uh, and but um, I, I wouldn't say that we have been impacted so so negative actually. Okay. Uh, we have found found this right. And um, we have guidance like this, and that is something that we will keep keep having. Some some students are really comfortable being home uh, at in in their comfort zone, even though we want to push them to their development zone, as we call it. Um, but but we still want to offer this uh, digital uh, way of learning. So so that that's a good impact, I would say. Uh, yeah. Although. We haven't we haven't met so so many students uh, in like person. Like this right now. Exactly in person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have them like in guidance and so, but the events uh, like it has been a war out there. You know, the, the all the digital events this year. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that that has probably been the only positive side of COVID is people traveling less, less pollution in the air, and of course meeting more uh, digitally. So do you, do you think that this is something that you guys are going to continue keeping it digital or are you going to move back to the uh, in-person events and in-person meetings? We, uh, for now, uh, we will keep both. So we will still offer digital guidance, but we will, we will uh, start offering physical guidance again and physical okay. meetings. So we have a tiny office <laughs> in the H building for you who know the the LNU and the campus. Uh, so we are in the H building uh, besides the or in front of Info Center. So we, so it's in the uh, by the main entrance and and there you can just step by. Do you see if I'm there or my colleague Jacob? Like just just come in and say hi or if you want to ask something or whatever it might be. You're always welcome. Awesome. And you're a pretty centralized uh, association, Drivhuset, in different parts or different cities of uh, uh, Sweden, or is it like very independent in every city? Um, uh, it, uh, my, my, my first like impulse is that we are very independent, but right. uh, one of the impact, if we go back to that question, is uh, one of the impact after COVID is that we have been much closer to the other drivers in, in Sweden and Norway. Okay. Since we can meet like this and we can do it more often than before. Uh, we, we could do that before <laughs> the yeah. COVID also, right? But we didn't do it. So, so now when we were forced to, we, we meet uh, like this every month and we do it 
national group. So we have an HR group, we have a statistics group. Um, right. Yes, we have different mar marketing group. And uh, and we have something called drivhusetonline.se right now. So you can go there and you can go courses for free. So you can just register and then go courses for free. We have Drivhuset live webinars. Uh, so there's... Uh, there. Yeah, that is why our calendar is full right now because now every every dream is, is offering webinars to to students all over Sweden. Brilliant! That sounds awesome. Um, Linda Carlson, do I need to be in Vecco to get Dreamhus at support, or do you also work with founders based in Alvesta or Kalmar or any other place close to Vecco? Is it just Vecco based or the surroundings as well? Uh, we are based in Vecqua, so we usually don't uh, go to another city to meet a student physically. Uh, then they usually come to us, to our office at LNU. And uh, one reason for that is because we are so small. So it's only me and my colleague uh, Jacob, right? So we would like to, to, to be on place. Um, but we now when we're offering digital meetings, uh, we would love to meet people in, in Alvesta as well. And uh, so Linda, if you if you are a student uh, or if if you if you're not, uh, we can meet you and we can we can support you in, in what you need. But you but you're both welcome physically to the office and uh, or if you just want to start from a digital meeting, it's it's in your yeah, you can always share your uh, LinkedIn address, uh, Linda, and you can always connect as well. Um, Gabriela, let's talk a bit about women in business. That's that's something very close to my heart. <laughs> um, how do you see that? Uh, well, a little bit, as I told you before, I would like to see more of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that we really need to support each other. Uh, we... A lot of men, women have a lot of uh, interesting uh, ideas. They have a lot of passion for different subjects. And um, so the only thing we can do is to support that, to increase, increase it. One way of doing it is by our network, Young Ladies in Business, where we can meet. Uh, and they're, they're, uh, how, either how we turn it, like we, there, there's another kind of, um, uh, how to say, um, there's a, another energy uh, when they're only women talking about the ideas, listening and hearing feedback. But but they're also uh, they all, there's also the in need of a push to really start to really take the step. And yeah. sometimes maybe women or or, or men. Uh, I, I'm not an expert on women and men um, entrepreneurship. Um, yeah but not seeing it as taking a huge step as the first thing they do, but yeah. taking a small step and then the next, the next one. So, um, yeah. Mm. Mm. But the, um, do you see a lot of women coming straight out of university to create? If you just look at the ratio of men and women uh, founders, do you see that there's a balance or there are mostly men coming straight out of university starting their own businesses? It's actually 50-50, uh, so uh, that yes. is one of the things that we are the most proud of uh, at Drivhuset, both, both locally but also uh, nationally. We are having this balance of uh, men and women starting. It's, it's a good balance uh, when it comes to the university students. Yeah, that's awesome. And Sweden is known for its gender equality, so that's uh, that, that, that's really <laughs> really awesome to hear. Um, yeah maybe a good idea is to create a women entrepreneurs network in Vecco. We have that from one of the uh, people in the audience that yes, it would be nice to have a, a network just for female entrepreneurs and to help them flourish a little bit more in, in that ecosystem. Mm. Definitely. Uh, the, fir the first step could be joining Young Ladies in Business Vecco. You can search for it on Facebook and there you'll find the group. And mm. so, first of all, there's, it's only for women, and and it's for young women-driven uh, women. So it's both mm. entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs. So yes, it, it can be good with network with only 
uh, business owners, uh, but it can also be be good to mix. We usually say that magic happens when we when we meet people uh, from different backgrounds, right? Yeah, that's uh, always a uh, good. Uh, how do you think, Gabriella, we can make the ecosystem, the startup ecosystem, better? You have been driving um, uh, sets for for some time now. So, in your experience, what do you think is a good way to make our ecosystem better? Um, do you mean in whole Sweden? Well, uh, my my experience is uh, for now it's most locally. Uh, I would say that we are a good example here in Kronobay. Uh, I have talked other regions and uh, compared to us and uh, the uh, we are a really good example without bragging and uh, try to be humble but um, it is because because we have a good communication we don't right. see each other as competition um, mm -hmm. let's just say the, the fact that uh, that you have started up around here it's something that is similar to this where we want to inspire for entrepreneurship and uh, yeah. instead of not talking to each other and like go like working parallel and, and fighting <laughs> like we're we're tiny and not you you're like very you're global of course and um, but you're also based in Ecuador. And so instead of working hard uh, as tiny organizations, we can communicate and, and be bigger together and and reach out to uh, to a broader audience. So, Brilliant. Yeah, so don't, don't be, be afraid to, to get in contact and to, to talk and hopefully can lead to collaborations. Yeah, collaborations again, building bridges instead of uh, looking at each other as competition, rather join and uh, help towards a better ecosystem. Uh, are there any specific kind of ideas that support, like tech ideas, or uh, do, do you work with any kind of ideas? Any kind of ideas. So that's, okay. uh, that's also one one of the things we we don't judge, of course. Um, mm -hmm. So then, if for example your your idea is within tech, and then we can help you develop it, and then we can take uh, get in contact with our partners. So we have a partner within tech, and you can get guidance from them if you need uh, support within a, doing a requirement specification, how much it might cost. What you need to think of there are some like i uh, tech uh, terms so since we are so small we don't have competence in all industries so we are generally in our business development and that's why we are very dependent on our partners of course so they can help yeah perfect perfect um then we can take a few more questions um if i created a startup before and it failed is it a good idea to try again with a new idea i'm not sure and i would like to know um without doing any judgment here i always or drivers that always support ideas we support or or i wouldn't say ideas i would say entrepreneurs so we always support the entrepreneurs uh, if you have an idea uh, Come to us if you have done a business before and it failed like we don't judge that we don't uh, say that well it doesn't it, 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 it will not succeed this time um but if we look at examples there i would say that it is more usual that entrepreneurs test a lot of or not a lot but they test uh, some ideas before they really succeed with one so yeah. Yeah, but uh, what I told you before that maybe it's not the first idea that you succeed with, but it can lead to a new idea. Um, yeah, and maybe with the, with the right support, you can come really far. Yeah, and there's not just, uh, I mean, it's not uh, uncommon to see people make some mistakes and then move on. So, um, uh, Gabriela, what mistakes do you see people making again and again? The most common mistake that you see in um, people who come to you? Um, well, I, I, as, I, as I said, I, I really don't want to like judge any um, idea or mistake. Mistake can, mistakes can be good as well. Absolutely. Uh, but if we take a just usual general uh, mistake, is that 
people they or entrepreneurs they can maybe go too fast mm. and if they go too fast it might get wrong uh, easier and what i mean with that is that for example when you register a company and uh, maybe you choose different uh, you you can change a lot of things on the way um yeah but but we can hold your hand while registering the company we can help mm. you we can support you we can recommend you and suggest what what suits you the best and that can save you some time but if you do it on, uh, on your on your own and uh, mm. you just run then then you may be uh, fall and it, get, and it can take more time and maybe money as well yeah yes there's so much help and support available so just you know why not take it why not just instead of reinventing the wheel why not you know come to Dreyfus and see how it's done <laughs> um all right, uh, we have uh, we don't have a lot of time left, but we still have questions coming in. So let's just see if we can take a couple more. How should I present this to you as a business plan, or can we just discuss? So if someone wants to come in uh, with their idea, do, do they need to have like a whole presentation, have everything compiled, or they can just walk in? They can just walk in. <laughs> you or don't have to. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to prepare anything. There, there, there is also that is also one thing that's differentiating us from the other. That you, we really take your, uh, like, um, yeah, welcome you at any stage yeah. you're at. You can just like, just got an idea, or you just feel like you want to do something. And then we can work from there. So, so we are here for you from the very beginning. What a great service, I'd say. Uh, and Farhan says, absolutely, I'm grateful for help. Grateful that you you guys helped him out with the whole registration process. It's quite overwhelming. So I can imagine there are a lot of uh, people out there who are really happy with you guys for helping out with all of these processes. So good job there, Gabriela. Thank you. That's Perfect. It. Yeah. Thank you. So um, before we round up the session, um, would you like to uh, for students with idea at a very early stage, what advice would you give them? Um, I, I couldn't really hear the question, I'm sorry, but if, did I understand okay. you correctly? What advice I would like to give the students at a really early stage? Yeah, that's the question. Yes, okay. Uh, well, first of all, I would suggest you to still be open-minded for opportunities. That is one of mm. the main things within entrepreneurship, to to see opportunities and, and take action on them. So even though you're in an early stage and you want to create uh, this idea of yours, uh, look besides you, look around the... Um, um, look around you and talk to your customer or potential uh, user what do they see what do they have so that you don't invest in time and money and feelings it is this idea baby of yours and then when you launch a product maybe there's there's no need for it there's no one who um uh, who wants it uh, so so that's that's my advice Perfect, perfect. So with this, Gabriella, we're going to thank you once again for being here with us and giving us your time and sharing your awesome journey with us today. And uh, all of you lovely people who signed in today for this Fireside Chat, thank you so much for being here today. And I leave you with this. And if you have any other questions, I see that there's still questions coming up. So uh, feel free to send them either to Gabriella or to us here at Startup Grind and we'll make sure that they get answered. Thank you very much and have a lovely, lovely rest of the evening. Thank you Goodbye. so much. Thank you. Bye.